G'day, welcome back to the channel. Well, have I got some stuff for you today. In today's video, I do what none of the regulators want to do. I crash test a drone to see how dangerous it is. Yes, the regulators keep telling us these things will bring down airliners, they will cause death, destruction and mayhem everywhere they fly, but they never present the evidence. There's never that independently peer-reviewed, scientifically-based risk assessment that will demonstrate just how much danger there is associated with flying drones. Well, I did it. I did it today, and in this video, you're gonna see the outcome. Yes, welcome back to the channel. Now, it is April the 1st here in New Zealand as I make this video. It may not be April where you are. Well, it probably will be by the time I get it edited and put up. It'll be April everywhere. And I wanna talk about the regulations in New Zealand and my fire. Yeah, what's that got to do with drones? Well, here in New Zealand, it's nearly winter. Winter's rolling in. Don't let this t-shirt fool you. It's been quite cool of late. So last week I ordered in some firewood. Yeah, I, I burn wood to keep myself warm. It's very primitive, but it's also environmentally sustainable. You take a piece of wood, you put it in the firebox, you light it, and it dissociates into carbon dioxide and other things. The carbon goes up into the atmosphere and it is then sequestered by new trees and they turn into wood and then you chop the wood down and you burn it. It just goes around in circles. So it's a completely sustainable, renewable process that keeps me and my wife warm every winter. Fantastic. We don't burn fuel oil, you know, dead dinosaurs, which is not renewable. We don't rely on electric electricity, electric heaters that in some countries are powered by coal or oil or gas, which are not renewable. So this is a very sustainable way to keep ourselves warm. So I ordered some firewood. Where's this going? You're asking, what's he, what's he on about? Anyway, just bear with me. The truth will prevail. I ordered some firewood and on Friday morning, bright and early, the man from the firewood company bought his tandem trailer, truck and tandem trailer, up my driveway and realized he couldn't get all the way up. <laughs> so he dropped my several cubic meters of firewood on the driveway. <laughs> Big heap. And here's me, poor old 70 year old man. I had to move it all myself. <laughs> I'm glad I try to keep fit. Anyway, so I had to move several cubic meters of firewood from where it was to where it needed to be. And it needed to be in my woodshed. My woodshed, here it is, look at it, Ooh, wonderful. It's nothing flash, but it keeps my wood dry in the winter when it rains a lot. So I had to move the wood from the pile on the driveway to the woodshed. And the easiest way to do that was just pick the damn stuff up and throw it. I hurled it, I tossed it across my backyard. And some of these bits of wood are quite heavy, maybe four, five, six pounds. And I threw them as hard as I could because it was quite a long way, I had to, they had to go. So there was wood flying everywhere in my backyard, you know, bouncing off the walls and skidding along the, the cobbles. It was, yeah, it was quite fun. Um, was it dangerous? Well, it wasn't illegal. There's no, there's no law against throwing wood around your backyard. There's no regulations that forbid you from throwing wood around your backyard. There's not even any rules that say you can't throw wood around your backyard, it's too dangerous. So yeah, it, it, it was a degree of danger because when you pick up a big heavy piece of wood and you throw it as hard as you can, even if you're an old man, it, it gets quite a bit of energy behind it. It carries quite a bit of energy with it. And once it leaves your hands, well, that's it. You've got no more control. It's not like, for example, one of these where you've got control all the way to the scene of the crash. You can avoid things. You can dodge things. You can see where you're going. You can change the course of one of these mid-flight. If you're hurling a great big piece of firewood, no such luxuries. Once it leaves your hand, it's committed to the flight path, which is governed by the laws of physics. And if someone happens to be standing in the way, well, it's too bad for them. So there is a degree of danger associated with hurling firewood around your backyard, but not enough. Not enough for people to pass rules and regulations to prohibit such a dangerous activity. So here I am hurling my firewood around the backyard and bits are bouncing off the walls and skidding across the cobbles. And it, it dawned on me that there's something not right in the world of drone regulations, at least here in New Zealand, because I've got a number of these small drones. I've got the, you know, this um, Tiny Hawk, I've got this Smart 16, I've got my Mobula 6 somewhere, which I keep losing it because the damn thing's so small. Oh, here it is, found it. <laughs> the Mobula 6, the good old Mobula 6, 20 grams of danger, 20 grams of danger. Anyway, I was thinking, I can hurl all this wood around. I can throw it as far as I can, as hard as I can, Nobody gives a damn. Nobody cares because it's in my own backyard. And, and my wife knew I was hurling wood around. She wouldn't come out. She feared for her life. And nobody else coming anywhere near could not notice 
then I'm hurling wood around. And if they, unless they were extremely stupid, they'd keep out of the way. So, yeah. And of course, I've got my yard is fenced. And so people aren't going to wander in anyway. So why can't I fly this in my backyard? Why is it that when I fly this in my backyard with my goggles and no observer, I'm breaking the rule, breaking a regulation. I risk punishment, fines, um, court, possibly court appearances. I risk a lot by flying this. So I figured, well, these regulators must know a thing or two, right? They, they get paid good money. They're the experts. They must know what they're doing if they're making rules about these things. So I thought, let's do a scientific experiment. Let's do what the regulators wouldn't do. Let's conduct a test. Let's just see. Let's quantify the actual and verify the amount of danger these pose. And it must be great because obviously this is far more dangerous than a piece than a six pound piece of firewood being hurled at full speed across my backyard because I can do that, but I can't fly this in my backyard FPV without an observer. So I did what anybody in my position would do. I stacked a couple of bits of wood and I thought we'll do a controlled test. Here's the controlled test. So I stacked the wood up and I hurled a piece of another piece of wood at that pile of that stack of wood. And here's what happened. Ooh, look at them go. <laughs> Obviously the piece of wood that was flying through the air has a lot of energy in it and it just knocked those other heavy pieces of wood out of the way. You would not want to be in the way of that piece of firewood that I threw. That could ruin your day. That could really make you feel rather uncomfortable in a big way. Possibly even cause injuries, possibly even life-changing injury, injuries. If it hit you in the head, it might even kill you. But it's safe. I can do it. No rules, regulations stop me. So it was with some trepidation, therefore, that I restacked the wood, put my FPV goggles on, and flew this into the same pieces of wood. Now, remember, something that's completely safe and legal, well, supposedly safe, something that's legal, you're allowed to do it under the law, no restriction, no control, no restraint, caused that wood to fly everywhere. What the hell was this going to do? Should I have worn fireproof overalls? Should I have stood a lot further back? I don't know, because remember, this is far too dangerous, far more dangerous than hurling firewood. I'll show you the results of that test. Prepare, be prepared to be amazed and... If you've got children in the room, you might want to cover their eyes because this is what happened. It's in slow-mo. I did a slow-mo so you could see the whole disaster unfold before your eyes as this incredibly dangerous craft controlled by regulations and rules and all sorts of restrictions flew headlong into that pile of wood. Let's watch it. Yes. Does that tell us anything? <laughs> Does that really tell us anything? Does that tell us that perhaps regulators don't have a grasp on what they're doing in some cases, does it tell us that the reason we don't have these scientifically conducted tests is because they wouldn't support the narrative that this is a very dangerous thing that cannot be used without an observer if you're flying at FPV in your own backyard. <laughs> this just absolutely dis destroys any argument that CAA in New Zealand can bring to say, Mr Simpson, you must always have an observer when you fly FPV in your own backyard with one of these. Seriously, unbelievable. And remember, the reason that Model Flying New Zealand and I have parted ways, I have not renewed my subscription, which lapsed last night, 31st of March. The reason I haven't renewed it is because Model Flying New Zealand agrees with CAA. They say, you must follow the rules. And, but don't worry, you can do it legally by putting the cones out and having the signs and, and, and the tape and someone guarding the gate. I don't need that when I throw my firewood around, but apparently with this, I need that. And I'm just not prepared to do it. Seriously, I'm. who's going to look more stupid? Me with all the tape and everything to fly this? Or CAA when I fly this and nobody dies? <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh, anyway, just to make it very clear. Um, this is a picture of me flying legally and happily in, my, in that same area I was throwing the wood around. Look at me. Happy, cheery, smiling, line of sight. Now here is a video of me flying illegally because I'm flying FPV and I don't have a visual observer. Does the, the, does the craft look any more dangerous to you? Does it look as if somehow people are in, you know, people might die or property might be damaged? I don't think it does. So any regulator, such as CAA New Zealand, that says this is too dangerous to fly in your own backyard without a visual observer, and any group that agrees with them to the extent that they will actually uh, get an exception that requires you to have cones and tape and, and signage. I don't have time for that crap. I'm 70 years old. 
I've only got so many years left. I don't want to spend my entire life rolling out tape, putting up cones, signs, just so that I can fly this in my backyard. I'll take up firewood tossing as a hobby if that's the case. <laughs> it's just crazy. And I just thought it was just a, a strange convergence of events where it just dawned on me how ridiculously over-regulated we are when I was able to throw that firewood around. Nobody could do a damn thing. But it wasn't unsafe either. So if that wasn't unsafe, <laughs> seriously, the scientific tests prove. And that's why we will never see regulators conducting their own scientific crash tests of drones, because the evidence will not support the narrative that they've been rolling out for years and the justification for the removal of our freedoms. Uh, in some cases, people have just handed them over. That's another thing that annoys me. If, if you see a rule as ridiculous as this one and you abide by it, you're just handing over your freedoms without even putting up a fight. Now, I fly safely. I always fly safely. In fact, I'm going to get some merch done and it's going to say, Harry Day Club, your safety is my responsibility because that's how it should be. That's how it's always been with me. If I'm flying a drone or a model aircraft and you're around, your safety is my responsibility. I'm flying something that in worst situation could cause you an injury or worse, could damage your property. So I'm taking responsibility for preserving your safety and the safety of your property whenever I'm flying in such a place that it, you may be exposed to my actions. I don't give a damn about rules. Rules don't matter for jot. Some great advice in rules. That's why Harry Day says, rules are for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men. Are you a fool? Or do you consider yourself to have at least a little wisdom? That should guide you in whether you blindly follow rules, use rules as a crutch, or whether you say, everybody's, everybody's safety is my responsibility when I'm flying. That's how I look at it. If CAA want to say, and modifying New Zealand, I want to say, no, 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 that's not true. You just follow the rules. Well, then I don't, I don't want to live in a land where people are discouraged from taking personal responsibility for the safety of others, as I do. That's not going to be a safe place. No matter how many rules you've got, it's not going to be a safe place. Safety is about an attitude, an attitude of taking responsibility. And that's what I do. If, I want to, if anyone wants to criticise me for it, go ahead. But it will say more about your perspectives than it says about mine. Anyway, that's it. I just thought I'd make that video, make it very clear. Um, in the meantime, uh, we will have more flying videos coming up. Uh, I can no longer fly unsupervised at the airfield. <laughs> yes, last night the Magic Fairy came and took all my common sense, took all my knowledge of the rules, took all my flying skills and all my attitudes to safety, stole them away because I didn't pay some money. So now... I must be supervised by, and when I look at it, it's going to be by someone who has done less flying than me, knows less about the rules than me, and probably doesn't have the same skill set as me. But they're going to supervise me to make sure I don't kill anybody. That's an example of how good the rules are. And this is what happens when you get people regulating things that they've never actually done themselves, and they, they don't have any first-hand experience of. This is why you get very bad rules, and very bad rules do not promote compliance. And as I've said, I am not going to be using the rules as a crutch. I will be using the rules as good advice in many cases, but I will be making my own safety assessments every time I fly, as I always do. I do my risk assessment, I manage the risks to a satisfactory level, or I don't fly. That's it. That's me. If people have a problem with that, I don't understand you. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> I'd say videos coming up from the field and lots of other places now because I have to find other places to fly if I'm not going to be supervised. Can't fly anywhere within four kilometres of an airfield or a helipad because I'm just too dangerous. The difference that an overnight sleep makes. Just unbelievable. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if this video is not too long, I might put some bits on the end for you. Or maybe not. <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye for now.